little bit here. And this video is going to be installing coil springs on the front of a Miata ND. So if you don't already have your car up on jack stands, you'll need to do so. Remove your front wheels, obviously, and have the suspension hanging down. We need to remove nuts here on the top. If you have the, the brace, factory or otherwise, you'll probably have to remove it to access all of them. When I say remove on the factory one, you don't have to take it all the way off. You just have to unhook it on this end. To get access to that third nut that is under it. On the left hand side there is this thing called a sound tube in the way. Now I will tell you if you haven't already removed it that's your fault. I'm kidding. I do have a video on removing it if you need assistance on figuring out how to get that out of the way. Now my socket fits over here, but it doesn't quite go all the way down when it's in on the extension. So I put the socket on, then I set this on the top, then I loosen it. And let me mention while I'm doing this, there are differing opinions on torque. I am using the torque specs that are on the manual. So the manual for the ND. The NC and ND have very similar suspensions, but they have different torque specs. So I suggest you look into that, decide what you want to use. I'm going to leave two on here with a few threads loose. So using 12 mil, we're going to remove the bolt holding the wheel speed sensor. On this one, I actually put the bolt back in to hold it. There is another one Hoping you can see it. Can I see my hand right here? There is a brake line that comes down. I may on the other side. I had to remove that bolt. I might be able to get away with it on this side. It seems like this side has a little more space, so you might be good there. We'll see. So next, got to remove the sway bar end link. The I am only removing the bottom. Now I have aftermarket ones. These are cobalt, also uh, similar to the Carcept ones. Yours will be a 14 mil if you have stock. I am removing the bottom one. Time wise. On the other side front, I took my time, and this includes all the time jacking everything up. It took me about two hours, but that includes going slow. I actually set the preload, all that, like you're supposed to. And that's starting from the car on the ground, the whole works. So, and that was the first one I've done on this, on these. So, uh, that was two hours. Uh, this one should be much, much faster. So now I'm gonna we're going to loosen the bottom bolt of the shock. It is 17 mil, and on the front, the nut is not welded onto it. The nut is on the right 
the front of the vehicle. Remember that. Do one side at a time so that you know which side has which. Uh, what you can compare the two sides. Now this will not come out because there's way too much tension still. The shot it's being pushed down. Next, we're going to loosen the upper control arm bolts on, there on the inside. This is the one where on the other side I had to, uh, yeah, well, to be safe, yep, to be safe, I'm going to uh, remove that bolt. There's that 12 mil bolt holding the brake line. That'll give us a little more room. Don't have to worry about smacking that when I break this loose. As with all my videos, let me point out that this is how I do it. This is my standard disclaimer. Disclaimer. This is how I do it. And while I have researched it and I have done most of this stuff before, including suspension work, be sure to do your own research. Be sure to follow the manual for whatever vehicle you are working on. And I am not, this is for entertainment purposes only. Entertainment purposes only. I am not responsible if yours gets messed up. Now we're going to do the front one. On these, the nuts are welded. Yeah, that hurt. Moving on. Feels like it should be fully loose, but it's quite tight still. All right, that's got to be all the way loose. There we go. Now they are both loose. You're going to have some tension on them because you have the whole weight of the suspension currently pushing down on them. However, everything is now loose. Hopefully this is all in the picture. So if you remember, I still have a couple bolts holding the top up in, I should say. Now I'm going to pull the bolts out of the upper control arm. top here and that's going to want it it's going to want to fall forward now it can't come too far because one it's going to hit here but also this is still connected now that loosens up the tension down here so we've got a little bit loose i'm now going to take there was now tension on a little bit of tension on these top bolts the nuts i've taken those off This is now loose. Top is loose. Pull the bottom bolt out from the shock. And this that frees it up. I found going through the back, and I hope you can see. It's dropping in the back. I bring the top around, watch the fender, and up and through. Okay, now it's all out. Everything's out. We're done. Oh, wait. No, we still got to put another one in it. It's the little, I don't know, plasticky piece. Came off of the top of the old shock assembly. I am. Cleaning off the piece, any of the dust and stuff that's on here. No need to have something else to wear on it. Dust will act as a basically sandpaper. Very fine sandpaper, but some sandpaper nonetheless. Slide that on like so. 
I went ahead and I set my dampener to 15 from hard, so it was all the way clockwise, and then I clicked it back 15 times. You take the bottom, have whichever sticker you want showing out towards the front, take the bottom, slide it in, watch the top so it doesn't hit your fender, and your light is going to be right in the way, of course. It does help having a second person here. Start pushing this forward. A arm in. Lifting. Making sure nothing's binding. Of course, it's binding at the top. Ow, pinched my hand. What I'm trying to do here is to get one of these started. One of the A arms. Of course, it's the one that you can't see. And this one doesn't want to go in. All right, change up. Now it comes out the other side. Figures. Again, a second person. I'm going to use my leg, hold it up. Try to line up the holes on top. The spring assembly will rotate. Okay. Like that. Top is in. I got to get in. Fight with the brake line thing here. Drop the bolt. Woo, second one's in. Now here's the thing. I can't, because I'm holding this up with my leg, I can't do the thing from up top. So here's what I'm doing. I have a nut and I use one of their wash better nuts. It has the little grooves on the bottom and I'm reaching over the fender. I feel and I'm starting it. Okay, I've got it on the width of the nut. It's just, you know, but you'll notice Spring is staying up now. Woo! Now we have to get the bottom on. Now I could at any time put a jack under it. Can you see it? I hope so. Right there it came through. Nuts on the front. You reuse the nuts on the front. Okay. It is back together, but not tight. So I'm going to get, I'm going to start all the bolts. And get those, get all the bolts started in but not tight. And then once you have it all started and not tight, adjust the uh, coilover. That 
being the preload. And if you've not adjusted your height, your height. So I shortened my end links. And obviously I haven't got them. If you haven't seen my video on adjustable end links and you have them, uh, watch that on how I will be fixing this. Um, how I'll be adjusting them and getting them set. I have the suspension back out a little so you can see. I have the front is completely on jack stands or jack stands. They are the front suspension is completely jacked up both sides via a jack under the uh, control arm. The jack stands are still here, but they are not, there's no weight on them. However, they're still there. If one of these were to slip or something, the jack stands will still catch them. All right, now we get to start tightening, torquing things down. We now have these three torque for these. I am doing 37 to 43. I'm actually doing 40. So right in the middle. Mine are from the manual, but again, check it yourself so that you make sure you get yours correct. This is where you got to slide it over. Be careful when you slide it over that you don't mess up your adjuster. It does clear. It does clear, no problem. And by the way, you will want to check all of your torques after uh, driving it for some time. You'll want to recheck everything, including your uh, coilover preload and all that, because those, those springs will compress. Don't forget these two. Just the stock ones. I don't know the torque on those. I am torquing mine down to good and tight, so. Oops. I doubt they're 40, but they may be. They are 14 mil. But they weren't that tight when I took them off, so. Good and tight. Upper control arm bolts. Again, these all this needs to be set when it's already got load, but there's dispute. So apparently the like the NCs were 62 to 72 foot pounds, but the NDs per the manual are 40 to 47. First, I am getting them snugged up. Both sides. Snug. Now, switch into the torque wrench. There's not a lot of room. I will here. I wonder. Let me do. It. That's still not a lot of room. There's a sway bar. <laughs> All right. You don't have a lot of room to work with here. Watch your fender. Thirty-five. Other ones should be easier, much more room. 45, that's what it says. It does seem light, but the uh, I will tell you the lower control arms, these here are uh, like 100 to 121. Now, whether those have to be loosened so that the bushing can reset and then tightened, I'm not sure. Now we have the lower shock. I'm hoping you can see this right here. Yeah, you can see at least the side of it. A lower shock here. It is 17 mil and per the manual, 
40 to 47. Now, I have seen these. I've seen it say 49 to 59. I've seen it say 50. What does that say? 52 to 76. Wow. Seriously, I'm going 45. Don't forget. Wheel speed sensor. And then back here, your brake line. The ride height, I didn't mess with the ride height much because this it's there's going to be sag and stuff, and I'm going to have to do them all over anyway. So, I had checked them before putting them on, and they were even. The thing you may notice, I'm trying to get it so you can see, right in there, that's the ride height. You're going to probably have to remove this. Drop that so you can get the... the uh, C spanner, whatever they call them, into that. So I happen to use T9 uh, rust and corrosion protection. Basically, I will be spraying it on the threaded area all the way around and uh, have to use like paper or something to keep it from overspraying. But what that does. This, it actually dries into like a wax, so it, while it keeps this from rusting, it also lubricates to a point, and it is, uh, but it dries to a wax, so it doesn't, the dirt doesn't stick to it. So if you put grease on here, it's, the dust and dirt's going to stick on it. If yours is not a daily driver, you probably don't care. There you go. Front ones are on. The left front was 13 and a quarter. The right front is 13 and one eighth. This is just lowering them and then uh, pushing, uh, bouncing the front end just a little bit. So might settle a little. I, I'll probably have to adjust them, no doubt, at some point. And of course, it. it have to drive it a little and then you got to come back and recheck everything. You can see the rear have not been touched. Yeah, they're way up there. They're like uh, 14 and a half stock. So there you go. Front is done. Hopefully it was helpful. If so, please like, subscribe, comment, and good luck with yours.